All right, today I have Michael Hammers on. Um, he's been doing a lot with the Lorraine um, Borough Hiking Trail, so I wanted to uh, touch base with him with all the good things that's been going on there. So, uh, Mike, if you want to give a brief intro of yourself. Yeah, um, so uh, I'm Mike Hammers. I am the president of Lorraine Standing Creek Hiking Trails, uh, which operates down in Lorraine Borough. I uh, also uh, am the mayor down there in Lorraine, so I'm on the political side of things down there in the borough. All right. So I've what? Been, are, uh, so what? Oh, I'll keep you on. Keep you on. Oh, no, I. Good. Keep going. Um, so what exactly are the Lorraine Borough Stony Creek hiking trails? Well, uh, that was an idea that came out of uh, late 2019. I was out hiking with a buddy and we uh, we knew about the land that was there for a while. There were some hiking trails that were there previously. And we had some discussions during a hike that we should take a look at that land, reach out to uh, council and see if they would give us the permission to take over that land and catalyze it, bring back the hiking trails. So that's where it all kind of started. Oh, yeah. See, I was under the impression that you guys actually built them, but I didn't know there was actually some there or was like. Yeah, there there were some there, but they uh, they they let them go. They were, uh, there was one that was uh, back in the early 80s that was put in by some other members of the council. It, it's part of what the white trail is uh there's a historic trail that we have marked now it's the orange trail that's the actual loop that they put in they gave us a book of all the documentation that they recorded when they built those trails and we kind of went back through all their notes and kind of remapped it out and put it in place because that was one of the original trails that were there um but there were some other trails down by the water that the boy scouts scouts decided that they were working on uh they did that for a while that, that went up to the waterfall originally um but those got overgrown for so long so we kind of just went in there uh, started with one loop and just kind of worked our way around and you know found different pathways that you know look like good trails to put in and we just kind of build them from there yeah you, i noticed they're pretty good trails like they're what i like to call beaten down when i say beaten down i mean like when they get wet, they're not going to be all slippy and muddy and such like that. They're just like, they're very compact. So they're actually nice to run on no matter what weather you might have. Right. Yeah. The yellow trail is a little tricky. That one still, uh, that one kind of followed uh, deer paths and things like that. So a lot of that isn't as packed down as some of the other trails, but, you know, we're working on that a lot. We take some of our 5k routes through that way. You know, it's a little tricky in the end, especially if it's wet, but, uh, it kind of adds the challenge to it also. So so how many miles do you think you guys have built so far up there? There's probably about 12 miles total from what we've mapped out. All right. Um, so what kind of other activities do you have for the trails? Like, is it more just like for running and hiking or other things like that, like camping? Yeah, we have uh, we have two campsites there. Uh, one down on the lower side off the uh, blue and white trail. That one there, it's it's down closer to Sam's Run, so it's a little more uh, wide open, cleared out. Uh, that area has been worked on for some time now. We have another one up at the off the white trail uh, coming off of Cauldron Street. That one we're going to be working on this summer, clearing some areas out of there. That's a larger area. There's more room for, you know, hammock camping and different things like that. Uh, but we're going to be doing some work up there. That's one of our goals. Um, but, you know, they're both open to camp. You can go under our website and, you know, fill out our form. Let us know you're staying overnight. We actually have some scouts coming uh, next, this weekend coming up. Uh, they're supposed to be uh, – staying overnight out there at the one campsite. So that's pretty cool. So do you guys have wood there if they're going to camp or anything like that? Because I, I know cutting down trees is a big no-no. Right. Yeah. No, there's, there's tons of down tree lumber. We have, we have a bunch of stuff up there around the area that's uh, been cut and stacked. Like that's another thing we're going to be working on this summer. We have a lot of down trees there. So we're going to cut them up and start moving some of that firewood to the campsites. Uh, so those piles will be building up over time. Now you were talking about 
the white trail, you know, the orange trail and stuff like that. Um, explain to people like what that uh, what that means, because I know from having to go on them, you have like a name for the trail, but you also mark the trees for the colors. Yeah, no. So we we do blazing on the trees uh, just to give people, you know, the, the the direction of where they're going, so they know how how the trail flows through the woods. Uh, we have signposts up that also have you know the colored signage that corresponds to the trail name and the trail markers that you know which way they're going. There's arrows on them, so they're dire directionalized. Um, but yeah, it's it's real simple. You you kind of you can get the map at the trailhead. You follow you know pick the trail you want to go, and you just follow the blazes throughout. And it's going to guide you the whole way there. So some of the trails have multiple blazes on them of different colors because some of the trails actually merge together in spots and then split back off. So there are times you'll see up to like three blazes on a tree for three trails being on that same pathway. I will say the way you guys have it set up is pretty nice that you almost have to get lost or take the wrong trail that you want to be on because the coloring, whatever paint that you guys use is pretty clear to see. It's not just, uh, it doesn't fade into the trees. It's more like a clear coat or something like that that you can actually clearly see Whereas maybe when you go to a state park, some of that blaze gets blended in a little bit. Yeah, and I mean state parks. I mean they they have they have it a lot. Than we do because I mean you they're they're dependent on funding volunteers and different things like that. And a crew that goes out every year and we reblaze everything. So you know that's how they stay as good as they do. Um, you know, but I mean we we use a durable, uh, environmentally friendly paint. So uh, you know, we're not putting any pollutants out there. Uh, but it, it, it's very durable. We, we brush paint it as opposed to spray painting it, uh, which allows it to stay a lot better. So I mean, we, we like the way we, we've done that. I mean, if I would have done it differently, I might have, you know, went with like uh, a plastic marker, a colored marker to nail in. But I found that, you know, putting things into trees, the tree kind of eats that up over time. You know, it'll grow around it. So it's better just to go with the blaze paint. Yeah, it, it, it like I said, it, it's definitely easy to see, and I appreciate that. And even the map um, that you briefly touched on at the trailhead, like it's it's also colored, like so you don't have to worry about black and white, which trail is which. Like the map is actually like color coded for the trail that you want to be on, so that makes that nice. Correct. Sure. So, um, some of the things that you have on the trail is like some different uh, scenery things or things that you can. Uh, see when visiting um like what's your favorite and what are some of those different things that uh people should go and look for well i mean i'd have to say my favorite is the waterfall i mean that that's turtle falls it's all the way up at the end of the uh, blue blue trail that's pathway to the falls that's why it's got its name i like that i i like that route just the, the whole the whole trail itself going up there uh, you get to go up through the woods. The, the scenery changes, you know, just when you start from the when you start from the trailhead, just the different uh, vegetation and trees, you know, where, where, where you start there and you keep going up. And when it starts to meet up with the uh, the red trail, you start to get into a lot more evergreens, and a lot more piney trees going up through there. And uh, the closer you get to the water, you know, different vegetation. So, I mean, it's it's a really nice, nice hike. It's a lot cooler in the summertime because you're down in that valley. Uh, but we have the mini falls there. Uh, you cross over, there's a, a nice little uh, rock walkway that we kind of maintain going over there. Uh, eventually, we'd love to put a swinging bridge right there in that spot. That was one of the one of the plans we had for DCNR, but we kind of moved forward on something else based on our engineer's recommendation. Uh, but there's plenty to see there. You could take uh, the yellow trail. There's uh, overlooks up there. There's one at the top uh, by Belmont. There's another one, like a little lower the, on the yellow trail. There's actually a spur that we put in that uh, dips off to the side. And that takes over. There's like a sewage line run that they cut through, but uh, it gives you a nice view of the city from over there. And you can take that trail back around and it'll bring you up the backside of Belmont back onto the yellow trail. So we actually have that mapped out now, the maps that we put out there. So. So that one big view on top of the hill, um, there's like a bench, and I think it's like by like a power line or something like that. Where does that actually overlook a lake of the city? 
So that that area there that overlooks uh, it looks it overlooks Moxham. You can kind of see into Ferndale a little bit down there by you know the sort of the Mayor Trail uh, by the bridge. Um, uh, you can kind of get down into the city a little bit. You can see over uh, down into Sheets and uh, parts of the city. There are other places up there. I mean, you can see that you can see the gap real well, like at the top of the White Trail if you're up there by Cauldron Street. Uh, especially during the fall and winter when the trees have lost all their leaves, you can really get a good view through. It's really hard to take pictures up there to kind of show what you can really see. So it's always best to just go out to see it for yourself because the, the, the camera really doesn't do it justice. And like, like you said, with each season brings a different view and, and perspective. Like I've been up there in all four seasons and it's ever changing, but it's also refreshing too, because it's such a, a change and again um not just the seasons but also the trail itself like you get so many different views just from like you know hiking another 100 yards down the trail or you know like i said or the weather per se right yeah it's always fun i mean i've talked to people actually (laughs) over the weekend or we were over doing the uh the the trail race down at trailhead down in rockwood and we met a lady there who said she came on new year's and basically crawled up to the waterfall and the ice and snow get to see it but i mean yeah i mean it's a different adventure every time especially depending on the weather conditions you know you could you could be out there in the middle of a snowstorm or you know and watching the leaves fall i mean so every 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 season's a different experience i mean i like the winter you know being out there when it's really snowing it's kind of interesting to hike in that kind of weather so you know ice up in the trails we don't get the super killer drifts like the laurel highlands trail gets in those areas but i mean we definitely get some deep snow up at the top so it's fun little adventure yeah i think my favorite one is um going up towards the waterfall you got that uh, first little creek crossing like in the fall all those leaves get in that like little bit of puddle where you cross it's just nice and uh to see all like the yellows and the like the light browns and stuff in there yeah, there's a nice view from up there. A lot of people were up there taking pictures. We we get a lot of a lot of tag photos from up there at that spot. Uh, let's see. Um, so if people want to help you out, like how do they go about like helping, like say donate or like free time and stuff like that? Easiest way is just to reach out to us. I mean, they can message us through our Facebook Messenger. They could send us an email. Uh, give us a call, everything, all our information's on our website and our Facebook page so they can you know, reach out like that. I mean, donations, we uh, we go through Venmo, so uh, that's on our our page as well. You can find that there. There's also, there's also uh, Venmo signs at both trailheads, so you can always just scan the QR code when you're at the trailhead if you want to make a donation. Uh, volunteers is the best way to help us. You know, I mean, money's always nice, but, you know, having having some bodies there when you're doing work, you know, it cuts the work in half and just to be able to be out and meet different people. And there, everybody has that same goal in mind to help and clean up the trails and clean up the environment there. You know, that that's, that's what we like to do. The interactions with the people. Yeah. Cause like you said, you have like 12 miles mapped out. I mean, that's a, a tedious task of itself. Just like say clearing the leaves in the fall or, you know, maybe, checking them like once a week or something however often you do it like just for random trash that somebody might just drop out of their pocket like that's a huge undertaking alone oh yeah it's a lot of work especially uh you know the yellow trail when it crosses sam's run uh there's a loop over there and that's probably one of the worst spots because the drivers from ohio street all the trash that they throw out or blows out a truck things like that blows into our rail system and i mean it's a nightmare you got to be in there constantly trying to clean it up and get rid of it you know so i mean that's getting volunteers to come and help with that is super huge for us just picking up a couple bags of trash here and there it's very helpful because the ohio street side it blows back so when you're clearing the trails um what do you usually use to clear the trails or like keep them maintained? Do you have to use like a weed whacker most of the time or just a leaf blower or, or are they, are they so worn now that they sort of take care of themselves? Well, I mean, we, we definitely hit them with the leaf blower. I, I usually do it like once in the spring, I'll hit all the trails and then I'll do it again 
you know, a couple times in the fall with the leaves, you know, I like to have it so that you can see the path. You know, a lot, well, a lot of people were back and forth on that. Some people like having the leaf trails and some you know, there's like it bare. Um, I find it a lot slippier when you have leaves on the trails. Uh, just the times we've been hiking on the yellow trail, things like that. That's one of the trickiest ones, but um, just finding different spots. And, you know, you think you're, you think you're good and your footing's good. You, you step on a rock or, you know, something like that that you just don't see. So, I mean, at least if we have the pathway cleared, you know, we don't really mind if some stuff gets on there, but it's basically the clear off all the, all the leaves and some of the like debris from storms and stuff like that. So we use the blower, the chainsaw is one of our friends, especially during wind storms. We always end up with some down trees. Uh, so we're, we're out there with that. And then there's some spots that we use the weed whacker, but I mean, for the most part, a lot of the trails are pretty well beaten down and path. So, I mean, it's not really that bad. I end up more up along the power line where the benches that you were talking about with, and, and some of the trail, you get some, some reason stuff just because of, you know, it being a deer path. Yeah. I, I mean, I personally appreciate a clear path because I like to know what I'm stepping on or what, you know, potentially is underneath leaves. So I, I always tell people I like them bare and I appreciate anybody who does anything to clear any trail off. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's my, that's my preference too. I, I like being able to see where I'm walking and, you know, sometimes, sometimes you're just paying attention to looking down. You're not really watching the blazes or, you know, spacing out somewhere looking at you know nature somewhere and you know you can kind of see where you're going in your peripheral vision because you can see the trail in front you know if you I, i've done it several times on the highlands trail just going you, you miss a blaze and you're like wait a minute and then you double them back to where you were just because you know you're just looking at everything around you and kind of enjoying the environment so yeah it's better to be able to see it than take a head first dive into the ground um yeah absolutely so we try the, to keep it safe for everyone. So one of the things that you have on the trail um, that I enjoyed doing was geocaching. Um, I, I'm assuming they're still there. I haven't looked for them in a year since I found them all, but you have it set up and you actually have a map at the trailhead, um, well, coordinates or whatever, to find the geos throughout the park. You have what, like 20 plus now? Uh, I think there's about 19 of them, yeah. Uh, we have about 19 of them up there. Uh, we have, the booklet is at the trailhead. Typically, you know, you use a geocaching app. Uh, some people other, use other different methods, but um, they're all out there. Every one of them has a code word in them. So if you find them and collect the code words, uh, you can turn in your book to us. And we have geo coins that are basically a poker chip with our logo on one side and the geocaching logo on the other side. Uh, but cool little collectible item if you if you like that sort of thing you know for collecting them all so we've had quite a few people that have done it and gone through them all and they, they enjoy it the kids enjoy it it's nice to get people out there uh on the 20th for earth day we actually had a cash in trash out event there where we had some garbage bags down at the trailhead people would come in do some geocaching clean up some trash for us we picked up uh, probably like 10 12 bags of trash out of that event so that was that was really good well, that sounds like a really good idea. Yeah, they're great events. A lot of people like participating in them. And plus, you know, in the geocaching app, you get credit for it as another geocache. So, uh, you know, going out and spending the day. And you get to meet a lot of people from a lot of different places because, you know, you'd, you'd be surprised where people come from to do geocaching and geocaching events. So it's, it's pretty popular. That's one of the reasons why we decided to put that many in at the trails. I will say it took me probably uh, six to eight hours to find them all. Cause I mean, I had to split it up obviously within a couple of days, but you know, each time is a new experience. Cause maybe sometimes you couldn't find them. Cause I know the one time I was probably, be, I was probably a little bit dumb and I went like in the winter and there's some snow in the ground and you know, you just can't really find one or two of them. Like, I don't want to say which ones, but you know, in the snow, cause you're digging around, pawing around, but, when the uh when there was no snow like as long as you have that app and you like listen to the clue a little bit you know they were always fun to find and i wouldn't say oh yeah hard but i mean there was a couple a little bit harder ones but you have to get into that geocache mindset to be able to find some of them i guess 
Yeah, we try to make it a little challenging. I mean, some of them are pretty much right there. If, it, if you're looking, you know, and just follow the clues, you'll get to them. But some of them were kind of out. Um, it was, the, the two most recent ones we put were in that uh, on that overlook shell extension that we put in. Uh, so to go to go to those two, you actually go and see the overlook of the city to catch those two. So that was one of the reasons we wanted to get more people over that way. It was putting the two of them over there. And that's always what's nice about geocache too is, you know, people tend to put them in like sites to see. So not only are you going to find something, but you actually get to see something cool and amazing at the same time. So it's like a double hit. Right. Yeah. And that, and that was our thought. Hey, people want to geocache, they're going to explore our trails at the same time. And, you know, wow, you know, they, the geocache is pretty much hit every trail that we have out there. Uh, you know, it, it leaves me for adventure so you know going and trying to find some just like you said you split it up into a couple days so now you're getting people out onto your trails on multiple occasions they're bringing more people you know so that's what we want we want to get the visibility and get people out there to come see us because there are a lot of people that really don't know that the trails are, are there you know they drive up ohio street every day and don't realize that there are 12 miles of hiking trails right there and a waterfall for that matter yeah, like I was telling about the incline plane trails is like you guys, it's it's another hidden gem within Johnstown area. I mean, I know you guys like to call it Lorraine and Stony Creek, but like just that Johnstown area, it's such a hidden gem that it's like, I don't understand why people don't know it's there. It's in their backyard. And I'm hoping this helps get the word out a little bit more to get more people on the trail and more exposure, I guess, for some of the things that you're doing, not just yeah, the trail. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and that's what we're trying to do as well. I mean, the, the more we can get out there, the more the people know we exist, you know, the different events we do, we, we always have, you know, our maps and flyers sitting out at the, at the admission table. We give people cards to get them to our website to search around. So, you know, we're trying to, to make people aware. Uh, there's some events that are going on uh, this year, other rentals that have their, uh, we're going to actually do, you know, guided hikes from their events. You know, just to get people from that event out to the trails. So, I, I think one of the one of the things that's gotten a lot of people out there have been the guided hikes that we've been doing. So that that's drawn a lot of attention to us as well. Since you brought that up, um, let's touch on that a little bit. Uh, you said about these guided hikes, and you've been doing these uh, knife hikes. What all do they entail, and um, do people need to bring anything, or you know, how do they prepare for them? Well. The, the the night hikes uh you definitely want to bring like a headlamp you know hiking poles if you're not a, a advanced hiker uh make sure you have good traction boots all, all the all the standard hiking stuff um but you know realistically you know you can hike those trails we we usually push off uh, close to sunset so you'll get to see sunset uh, and if this one coming up on friday we're going at a, at 8 30 we also have waterfall hike at 5 30. So we'll be doing a water, waterfall hike first, coming back, and then taking out the night group on, on that tour. Uh, so, you know, last time we got to see the sunset, we try to do them on the full moon. But, you know, you never know if the weather is going to cooperate to see the full moon. But, you know, still, it's a it's a nice adventure. It's fun to do it at night. You know, not a lot of people really go out and hike at night. So they get excited about going out and doing the trails that way. Yeah, because being in a group, it makes uh, people who might not go out feel a little bit safer. and then. You know, you might have a hesit uh, hesitancy with some people, you know, being on a trail and not knowing the course. So it just brings more people out and getting more exposure once again. Right. Yeah. Uh, Dan Kavalik, he's the one that leads all of our all of our night hikes. So he he, take, he basically plans the route, which way we're going, what we're going to do, you know, the whole the whole uh, adventure for the for the crew. And he'll lead. it, And then we post our staff throughout the line of people there's been times we've had like up to 40 people there so we'll have you know him leading somebody in the middle a couple people pulling the caboose if something happens and you know somebody you know needs to take a break or wants to you know stop and turn around and we have somebody that can get them back to the trailhead or just kind of stick with them in the group because we all know the route that we're taking so you know the upper the fast group go and then we kind of walk with them at their pace so we want, to, we want it to be a fun adventure we want don't want people to think they're racing and you know in a rush to keep up with somebody else that's kind of why we do it in that sense yeah because it's more of a fun thing you know to get people out maybe seeing 
I don't want to say a deer or something, but like seeing the sights, like the overlook, like you said, at uh, sunset or whatever, and just, you know, just getting out, having fun, getting a little bit of exercise. It's not seeing how fast you can get it done. Right. Yeah. And the overlook at nighttime is fantastic. I mean, it's a beautiful view of the city, you know, at night from up there. And a lot of people enjoy that. You know, people don't realize that that view is up there and, you know, to get out and see that and, you know, we try and change up. We, we try not to, you know, make every night hike up to the overlook. I mean, if you up there, maybe take a different route around. We've gone and done some night, night hikes up to the water where, you know, the, the water crossing there at the mini falls, you know, so we'd stop there and make that our turnaround point. So we, we try and change it up and keep it fresh. And, you know, with the, uh, the summer coming here now and the longer hours, we're going to, we're going to start doing the, uh, the waterfall ones just because, you know, with the warmer weather, you got to go into the water, you know, a little bit to get up there. Not, you might not get wet, but, uh, you know, it's a little bit of rock hopping, climbing up once you get past uh, where the blue trail d- d- dumps in Sam's run. So, but I mean, that's a fun adventure too. Everybody loves doing that. We get people of all ages taking that trail. So. Yeah. I think going up to the waterfall trail, it almost makes you feel like a kid again, just, you know, playing in the water. I don't want to say playing in the water, but, you know, having the water around you, you know, like, maybe climbing a little bit on rocks with your hands and stuff like that just makes you feel a little bit younger, I think. Oh yeah. Yeah. That, that, that was great. I, I mean, I remember when we were working on the trails to begin with, that was, that was what we were told. There was a waterfall up there. When we first got up in there, we, we got to, we got to the mini falls and, you know, we were like, they said it was a big waterfall. I'm like, this isn't a big waterfall. I was like, so we're, we're trying to figure out, you know, which way to go up there. So, you know, you, we went up the, up to where, trail is now there's a bed there that looks out over and you try, kind of go that way and we looked at the terrain and we're like yeah that's not going to be the best way to put a trail it, it was a pretty steep hillside on that side so you know we decided to cross over the water and you know over there where some of the other trails were originally uh so we got over there figured out that crossing got up the hillside you know climb up the hill you get up by ohio street you go back down that was where the old shoot was where people would get cold back in the day so from there it was just kind of all right well this is as far as this trail is going to go and then in the water it is so i figured you know that would be cool it was fun walking up there when when we saw it for the first time it was pretty neat and like wow we didn't realize that was there just the the experience that you get going up there and you know now I think about what everybody else does when they're going up there. So I remember my first time, like you said, climbing on the rocks and like a kid again going up there. I need to do that. You know, a lot of people love it. A lot of people go out to that trail, and we we noticed talking to a lot of people that that's that's what they're there for. So it sells it. Yeah, I mean, it, it's definitely an adventure. What I'm not a hard adventure, but you know, just one of those adventures that you like to go on, and it's a good place to take pictures the whole way up. So, I mean, if somebody's going to visit it, personally, that would probably be the trail that I would try to hit first. And then some of the other ones, just because I think you could probably get more out of that, you know, just adventure wise. But you really can't miss at all on any of the trails or any of the branches that you go on. Right. Yeah. No, I, I would tell everybody that one first. I mean, that, 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 I see that's, that's where you get, uh, you know, everybody loves fall so that that would be a really good one to start but come back and do other ones i mean climb it's it's worth the climb the views are great but just the hike itself is great the ter- terrain changes over every every course of that trail you know white whichever one you're taking up that way uh i mean i i, I highly recommend it there's the yellow is one of my favorite trails i mean it, it, it kind of reminds me of high highlands trail because it's out in nature it's a long trail you know the, you know point to point it is a loop but uh just just doing it and you know, being there and you're, you're more in nature than than you realize yeah because honestly like i said well i sort of said it before is you really can't get lost like say if you step off the trail and you like sort of panic you're really only maybe what maybe a quarter mile any direction you know to get to civilization per se it's true. Yeah. I mean, you either climb up the hill or go down and end up in somebody's backyard. So, you know, you'll, you'll get your way out to civilization. So, you know, getting lost in there is, I mean, I wouldn't say it's impossible because I'm sure I'd 
somebody would get lost in there, but you know, your odds of getting out like 99% that you're going to get to somewhere else if you go up or down, you know, but uh, yeah, that, that's what's nice about it. You don't realize that it's there and you're that close to residential neighborhoods, but as soon as you step into the woods, 30 yards, you don't even realize those neighborhoods are there. Yeah, that, that might be an interesting 911 call. Hey, I'm I'm lost in Laurel uh, hiking trails. I was like, can you tell me how to get out of here? To be like, go uphill, downhill. That might be a little <laughs> bit interesting. Yeah. So well, we do we do have the Oakland Fire Department. They are uh, they are on standby for the trails. They have our trail map. They're they're familiar with the area. They've done some training up there in the trails. So, you know, they know how to get in and out and get people out in the event that something would happen. Uh, I mean, more so you might end up not getting lost, but you, you know, you sprain your ankle or, you know, something like that happens, you know, I mean, those things do happen hiking and, you know, getting somebody can get you out of there is that they are there and prepared to do that. So, and we're, I mean, we're here too, you know, we're, we're, we're close. We're down at the trails a lot. Our, our team's been certified in first aid CPR. We're going to be doing uh, wilderness first aid classes coming up in August and September and then uh, some wilderness survival classes in the fall. So, you know, we'll be all trained up to you know, do whatever. And we, we figured that's a good, actually for us hosting these, high, you know, that they have, we have people on, we can triage anything until, you know, EMS and fire would get there. Yeah. That, that's a good, uh, I want to say almost like a transition, you know, from, you know, some of the other things you should do, you like stepping it up from like the guided hikes to, you know, first aid, just like bringing the community in like a full circle to different things for trail hiking or running, whatever somebody might do on the trails. Right. Yeah. And, you know, it's kind of crazy because when we talk about our nonprofit, like, you guys are what? Like you guys are a set of hiking trails. I'm like, yeah, but it's more than that. You know, like everything that we do, you know, our, our goal is focusing on outdoor recreation and entertainment and that's you know not only here with us in the trails but we 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 expand our services and help and donations outward into the community i mean we've helped we've helped stack house we've made donations to them we went up to up there and helped them build a bridge up on tall timbers um you know we're work, be working with mike cook over there help work on a bridge over in uh bike trails uh, we just did a, a, a race for fundraiser for the Castleman River watershed. So, I mean, we're, you know, we're trying to help out in the community as much as we can, you know, doing stuff like this and the different events that we do help, help bring, you know, awareness to a lot of that stuff. I do like that, that you're sort of working together um, with the other organizations like the incline plane and stack house, because as I was telling uh, Mike Cook, I was like, if you guys could come together and sort of like get the word out a little bit more, it's just going to bring more people to the trails and more people to the area, which brings in more money for funding and more businesses down to Johnstown as well. Right. And, and you know, Johnstown really, really did it right with this rebranding effort, you know, focusing on outdoor recreation and entertainment like that. I mean, you know, we, we attended the, the conference that uh, was that it was poor an acronym for it but uh it was basically people from harrisburg talking about a program that they're bringing in to kind of help with outdoor recreation and trails and hiking and getting people out into out into nature um so i mean there's going to be a big draw to that there's a lot of promotions uh, keystone trail alliance is doing uh, a hike hike fest here in october uh so they're going to be bringing things here we're going to be involved in that some other areas you know ghost town trail uh, Stackhouse, uh, Mike Cook, all of us, we're, we're all going to be involved in that effort in October. So there's going to be different events happening all throughout all of our areas there, uh, which is good. And that's what we want. We want to collaborate on things, you know, bring people to all of our places, you know, because, you know, we are one big community here. Like you said, you know, it's not just Lorraine or Westmont or Richland. I mean, it's all Johnstown. You know, when you, you fill out your address, it says Johnstown, whether you live in the city, whether you live in the the suburbs, wherever, you know, we're all together. You know, we're, we're here for everyone. We want to, you know, make this town as best as we can make, you know, doing what we're doing. So, you know, it's, it's nice to work with other people in the community that support what you're doing and we support what they're doing. Yeah. It's nice to get everybody sort of getting on board now uh, as a one unit. Um, so one of the other things, the other classes and courses that you guys have is a navigation course. 
you guys had those a few times now. Um, what are those all about and how do people register for those? Yeah, those, uh, you, you can go on and find information on the website. That, that's a registration, right? Uh, or, I mean, you could show up the day of and, you know, pay cash registration. But our next one's in June. I believe it's the 24th, uh, if I remember correctly. Um, uh, Dan, he teaches that as well. Uh, it's based on uh standard land standard land navigation techniques that uh we learned in the military it's you how to uh read a map plot points on a map and then use your compass and follow the terrain and actually navigate to those points you know based on using old school techniques you know you're in a place like dolly sods or somewhere like that where cell phone service doesn't exist you know and you get lost i mean you need to know some basic survival skills and you know map reading and knowing where you are is one of those that you should know so you know he had the idea to put the courses together here and we we kind of hit that off last year we put some temporary stuff up last year when we started it uh now we bought permanent signs so there's now a beginner course there and we also have an advanced course that has 14 different points throughout the trail system um, we are working on getting like paper copies of things that will be in the trailhead box. But if you go to our website in the different experiences, one of them is the land navigation page. You can download the maps and the points there to navigate to. Uh, so we're working on some different things like that. We, we thought that would be really cool to have that. A lot of people do the land navigation and the orienteering courses. So people into that sort of thing can kind of come out and check that out too. Yeah, I think that's, from my understanding, that's one of those growing outdoor activities that it's really taking off across the country right now. I have a friend, um, she just went down to, I think it was like Texas this weekend, but she went to like West Virginia and all kinds of places to these different events. It's just something different, Getting again, getting people out there to different points of interest and things like that. So you guys are like on the forefront of that, just like having that in the area, because at least in our area, to me, there's nothing like that in our area. Yeah, not, I mean, Stackhouse does have one there in their trails. You can get one at their trailhead. They 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 have an orienteering course. I'm not sure if Highland Park does or they don't, um, but I, I know Stackhouse does. And you know, we kind of thought it'd be good to put one in, just like you said. It's it's something people want. Um, more reason to get people out onto the trails. I mean, we we've gone as far as uh, Pokemon Go. We we put different in-game features throughout our trails by you know nominating our our trail posts and things like that for pokey stops and gyms but you know kids and adults or everyone's into that game so i mean getting people out there just for that reason you know mom and dad want to take a hike and they're taking the kids along and the kids are like yeah i want to go take a hike well there's pokemon stuff out there oh, all right cool you know just another reason for them to be excited to get out in nature so we're you know we're just looking at everything we can possibly do to kind of get people out there. That That is awesome. I, I wasn't aware that the, you guys had the Pokemon stuff. It's just, it's another aspect, just getting more people out there. And then like you said, getting kids involved, because I always like to hear that getting like families and kids involved, the more that we can get them out and enjoying the nature at a younger age, the more they can do it throughout their life and fall in love with the things that we actually enjoy ourselves. Right. Yeah. And that's important, you know, get, getting the kids out and getting them active. And, you know, that's why we try and do different things like that. We figure it, it, it'll get them out there. You know, even the geocaching, like you said, that's, you know, that's another thing that gets people out there to do that stuff. You know, we've had kids come out for our 5Ks, you know, so you know, it's nice to see that, you know, the, the involvement, parents getting people involved in this we get kids to come out and help us with cleanup efforts. You know, we offer service hours for kids in the community that need that for high school or church or national honor society, what have you. Uh, so we offer, offer that, you know, to get them some service hours and it gets them in nature and, you know, helps them learn about trail building and, you know, what it takes to actually do what we do. Yeah, so then they earn like a little bit more respect for the the effort that people like you put in to the trails to make things look nice and, you know, for them to be able to do the things that, uh, like, say, hiking or geocaching on the trails. Right, right. So you, you touched about it uh, briefly a couple of times now, uh, some races on the trails. 
I know, I know you have a couple 5Ks that, on the trails. Um, If you want to give a brief talk about them. Yeah, so we do two 5Ks a year. One is in the spring and one is in the fall. Uh, this year we're uh, in May. May 20th is our next 5K that's coming up. And then we have another one in September that we'll be doing. Um, but we, we we pick a different course throughout the trails each time. Um, we're going on our fourth one here, or this will be our fifth one. So we're gonna we're gonna try and you know flip it around, and see we you know get different course ideas because we we've tried several different ones uh, to put out there, and then only a couple of them have made it into uh, the race itself. So you know we've done this uh, how many times now? We've had what this will be our third five k that we've done, but we had about five, six courses that we kind of plotted to figure out which one we're going to use. So um, the, uh, we're, we're actually still in the works of that. That's on, on our map for this week. We're going to get the uh, 5k course plotted and mapped out. And we've always put that out ahead of time so people can, you know, get, get on there and get familiarized with it. I know you always come out and video our 5k routes that we do. So that, that's always nice that people get to see, you know, a visual representation of where they're going. So, uh, you know, they're $20. We give out a t-shirt for, for signing up. I mean, like I said, it's just to get people out and get them active, you know, the money helps us, you know, with our different fundraising efforts that we're doing down there at the trails in the park and stuff. So. I know, I know you guys do a lot of other events, uh, within the park throughout the year. Um, if you want to touch about some of those, I know the big one that you're pushing right now, um, you guys are having the Clarks and stuff. I think what June third or something like that. Yeah, June third. That's our uh, that's our third year doing our beer, wine, and spirits festival. Uh, we book you know, different bands throughout the day for that event. You know, we have three big bands, and then we have some acoustic acts that kind of fill in the sets between the bands. Uh, this year, like you said, we booked the Clarks to come in uh, and headline the event. Just you know, for a bigger draw, get them here. We we we, we like the Clarks, and a lot of people in Johnstown like the Clarks, so. It's a good reason to get everybody out. Um, we offer different like admission to because if it, you know not everybody wants to participate in the beer, wine, and spirits festival portion of it. So you know we have a sample a sample admission which is thirty five dollars. It gets you in. It gets you sample glass and ten sample tickets to check out the local craft vendors that we have. Um, then we have a twenty dollar just general admission. You can still get in if you wanted to buy beverages. You still could, uh, but it's just you know get in, enjoy the food trucks, check out the regular vendors, check out the music, hang out for the day, kind of thing. So you know we offer that, um, and then we have our parking you know on site, which is limited you know based on the area that we have. So we offer a VIP parking to park on site for fifteen bucks, and then uh, we have a free shuttle service that runs. From downtown Johnstown at Divine Street Garage, uh, we're actually running two buses this year that'll run back and forth from there. You know, bringing people back and forth from the event and to their cars for free. Um, Polka Fest is going on downtown that weekend too, so we always try and help them and promote that. You know, we always offer a discount uh, on tickets the day of for anybody who's coming from Polka Fest to our event. And our shuttle bus goes downtown purposely to get people back and forth if they wanted to go to Polka Fest. So, you know, you get a wristband from our event, you can come and go all day long as you please. So, you know, we encourage you to go down there and you know, check them out too. Yeah, uh, I mean, Polka Fest is a good event too. And I, like I said, well, you said go back and forth. I think that's a great idea going back and forth because maybe you want to, um, you know, listen to some polka for a while, but then you want to come back from the Clarks. And it's just, I guess it's like two different groups of people too, sort of intermingling i guess right and i mean you'd be surprised there's a lot of younger folks that are into polka music i mean you go and you look at that you look at their videos from every year and you get to see, you see the crowd i mean it's very diverse so and our crowd's diverse too i mean you, you got people that like different things and wines and beer you got your beer craft beer drinkers so i mean you got a wide variety in our age group you know when we look at our demographics it's anywhere from 21 to 65 is our it is really you know the hit for what we do and i mean that falls in suit with you know same thing with polka fest so you know that's why we try and promote it we we like our friends down there at visit johnstown they've helped us with some stuff here uh with some marketing grants that they, we did we wrote from them you know a while back so 
you know, we try and help them as much as we can. You know, they help promote everything that we're doing. So we, we really appreciate them. How, how many different uh, beer and wine vendors do you have right now? So right now we've, we've maxed out our breweries. We have nine breweries coming. There's going to be eight wineries and there are going to be five distilleries. There's going to be two cider, cider works coming and an meadery is going to be coming as well. So we'll have a wide variety of some different things there this year. Yeah. So if you can't find something you like, then you need to get better taste, I guess. There's something for everybody. You know, you have the people that are like that, I don't hear it all the time. There are people that talk about craft beer. And the first thing that they think of, I don't like those IPAs. I'm like, man, craft beer is more than just an IPA. You know, your 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 Budweiser, Bud Lights, Miller Lights, those those beers are, you know, they're Pilsners, they're lagers. All these breweries brew a Pilsner and a lager that tastes just as good, better than, you know, the original. You know, so, I mean, it, it's worth getting out and trying. That's one of the reasons why we host this event is, one, it gets people familiar with the local, you know, alcohol vendors that we do have. A lot of people like to go out and check out breweries and wineries. And it's really popular around here with Laurel Highlands Port Tour. You know, a lot of people do that and get out and check these places out. So it, it one, gives people the ability to come and check these places out locally, uh, sample different things they've never sampled before. Um, you know, our event has musicians, it has food trucks, it has different vendors. A lot of these places do their own events and look for their own music. So, you know, not only are we providing to the community, but we're networking between our vendors and our musicians. So, you know, we get musicians booked at different breweries because they sit there and talk to them while they're out or they're, the breweries listening to this band and they're like, wow, they're amazing. We got to book them, you know, uh, just prime example, Black Ridge. You know, I, I saw Black Ridge for the first time out at Levity. When I heard them last year, I was like, well, they, they're going to be in our beer festival because, I mean, they were an amazing band. So, you know, we, we kind of do the same thing with, you know, our event, kind of networking different people together to kind of help them with their business. Now, is there going to be food options there? And if so, what kind of food do you guys have uh, for people to eat? Well, we're going to have food trucks there. We have six food trucks signed up right now. They're all from around the area. I like to change it up every year and get different things. I mean, I, I bring in local food trucks, but I also like to bring in food trucks from out of the area because we have a lot of events here and you see a lot of the same food trucks at those events. So uh, this year we're bringing in, uh, we have a taco truck, Danny's Tacos. They're coming from Indiana. We have the Grumbling Gypsy. We have uh, Hostetler Concessions. Another one's Kill Devil Mills. They're from out Greensburg, Westmoreland area. Uh, WPF Concessions. I found them. Helltown Brewery, actually. They do wings, pizzas, and fries, different things like that. And then uh, Forlini's Kitchen is a nice little Italian food truck that's going to be coming. So, I mean, we have a wide variety. There's different all kinds of different flavors to choose from, from tacos to Italian. So um, if you're there for the day, usually you're going to eat more than once. So, you know, you got different options. A lot of people just go and sample different things from different places. And yeah, that's nice too. You got a lot of food options to choose from. Yeah. It sounds like it's shaping up to be a really nice event for people to go to and like something locally that should interest a lot of people. Right. Yeah. And we're, 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 like you said, we're trying to promote it. That's the hardest thing right now. I mean, you only get so far on Facebook. We're looking now to put it on the radio, different, get some different ads out there just to really promote. We put signs up around the area. We're going to be putting more signs up, you know, out of town. Uh, us, our board members, we travel to different places, you know, handing off flyers, go to different events, trying to promote it. So, you know, the clerks are going to help us draw. I mean, we've sold, well over 200 tickets already you know a lot of people in this last month are going to be you know moving a lot faster on these ticket sales uh, right now we actually put out a discount promo for the one month out uh, special basically that we're offering five dollars off each admission ticket for the, the sample admission and the general admission uh, there's a promo code out there. It's BWS 2023. So if you put that in at checkout, you're going to get $5 off. But that's from now until May 8, uh, 10 a.m. So that's open. You know, a lot of people might have been hesitant to get their tickets. You know, now's more reason to, to jump on board and grab them. 
Yeah, might as well save five bucks. Five bucks is five bucks, and that five bucks means you could spend at one of the vendors there and, you know, helps them. And, again, it helps you guys in the end as well. Right. Yeah, it, it definitely does. You know, we, I mean, we, we definitely put out a lot for this event. You know, every year we try and, you know, make sure it's as good as we can do it. And we try and do it better the following year. You know, we're, we're always looking for different ideas. We love the community's input. So, I mean, if anybody out there has any ideas, please email us, message us, you know, hey, you should do this. We think this would be great. You know, we're, we're trying different things. Uh, we have some different ideas stirring uh, in the works for, you know, possibly some events coming up this year, maybe into next year. We've been talking to some different people. So and we're going to try and do a few different things like out of the ordinary, you know, whether we keep going. I mean, beer festival will keep going every year. Uh, we do a fall festival in October uh, that's, you know, Halloween, fall themed. Uh, we used to do it like closer to Halloween when we first started, but the way the weather was at the end of October, you know, it was a little rough for the kids to be out that late hanging out in costumes and stuff. So, I mean, we bumped it up a little earlier, turned it into a fall festival. It's the same deal. We have vendors. We have, uh, we run our own kitchen to kind of, you know, make some money because it's a free free event to get everybody into. So we don't charge admission for that one. Um, we are, we have different vendors there. Like I said, we have the music, we have kids activities. We do like trunk or treat costume contests. So, you know, it's fun for everyone. Um, we did a haunted trail the year before last year. We didn't do one. We had a couple snags in the, in, in our planning last year with it. Uh, one was a hurricane Two, There was another event planned that evening in town. So we didn't want to, we didn't want to run the haunted trail and like cross cross over on their event. Um, so it's been in the works. It's been talked about. We might do that again this year. So uh, yeah, that'd be something to look forward to. The kids really like that. Yeah, it's a nice idea because you really, don't, again, it's another one of those ideas. You really don't have in the area like a haunted trail unless you're paying to like go to a haunted house. But like a haunted trail, that's just something unique for the area, for like the whole family to enjoy. Right. Yeah, it's fun. I mean, we, we enjoy doing it. I mean, we only do it one day, you know, uh, it's been talked about doing it for several weekends through October, but you know, when we do it for the, for the event, you know, it's just, you know, from like seven o'clock to like eight, 10, like 10 o'clock, somewhere around there, you know, while it's still dark. Um, but yeah, that that's in the works uh, again. We've been talking about it. So we're going to see how that, how that plays out with our fall festival this year. I mean, I, I find it to be a nice idea if you can pull it off again, again, like you said, you don't know what the weather, what might happen the week before. Right. And, and another big factor in that's volunteers, because we always look for people to come out, you know, especially with a haunted trail to set up a station, you know, do a scare station, dress up, scare people, you know, that we encourage people to come out. If you have a group that wants to go out and do it, you know, that, that's always even more fun. You know, same thing with the trunk or treat. We, that's open to anybody to come up and set up. We, you know, we give out a prize for the best decorated uh, trunk and things like that and you know the kids love it you know the vendors there they hand out candy so you know you get the kids walking around all day getting everything the kid, parents are happy because the kids are entertained so it's fun you know we're going to have a lot of different things there for the kids to do this year so yeah it's a nice, nice community, uh, community event now um, the back off of that a little bit I think you released it a couple months ago you guys have some really big plans for the future of the park itself um, if you could talk about those a little bit. Yeah. So, well, like I said, in the beginning of this, you know, I work, I work my other hand, it's uh, working with the Lorraine borough as the mayor. So we've been, you know, the trails have been working hand in hand with the borough in terms of, you know, things like this. Like we, we have an agreement with Lorraine to utilize the land that the trails are on that ball field area there. Um, so we maintain all that agreement she was with them for 25 years so we made sure you know we have access to the area the trails are going to be there um we're going to take care of them uh so what we did was you know we had we have that old ball field that's sitting there and we had some ideas and like i said earlier and we were talking about the 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 swinging bridge project that we wanted to do um one of the other projects we wanted to do was an amphitheater, outdoor amphitheater, where we could take our live music from the pavilions up in the park, put our live music in the amphitheater, playing out at the wood line, and then have, you know, people kind of sit out there and our vendors and parking up kind of behind everything. Um, so we talked to the borough about it. You know, there's some 
a couple of grants that we've been writing for that it, it, we turned it into a big phase project. A lot of the details are on our website. If you look at, you know, what the phases are right now. Um, but the plans now we, 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 we got through everything. We decided we're going to go and, you know, proposed to a DCNR grant to uh, build an amphitheater. Uh, it was going to be with ADA accessibility all around it. So not only does you have, you have the amphitheater there, but there's going to be an ADA walkway around the park as part of the project. So, you know, for our trails being in the woods, as much as they are, they're not really ADA accessible, you know, to, to get around on. But being able to walk around that park and having an ADA accessible walkway to get you through the park, I mean, still gets you out in nature. And we want to try and make sure we have that set up. Uh, so that was part of our plans with the project. Um, so we we put it out to DCNR. We laid out our plans to do that. Um, we also threw in a, a Frisbee golf course that was going to be uh, in the outer part of the park uh, as part of this. So we proposed that to DCNR. DCNR liked it. Uh, we had a lot of support from the community, a lot of support from our legislators. DCNR went ahead and awarded us $265,000, which was half of the cost of the project to get started on phase one of it. Um, right now we're in the planning designing phase uh, with our engineering firm. They'll be coming out, doing all the measuring, different things like that, getting all the, all the blueprints ready. We're hoping to break ground on that project in 2024. So uh, that will be available for our events that we do, for our music to be there. We're hoping to get uh, like the Johnstown Symphony to come out and do a show at the trails. Uh, we've had thoughts of, you know, community movie nights there, uh, just allowing people to rent it as if they would any other, you know, park around town so that they can have their own private events there or, you know, birthday party, whatever, you know, you, you have, you have the ability of having a band on stage. Uh, so it, it allows for, for more for the community. Um, our vision with it, we would like to do more bigger name music coming through this way. I mean, I know you see what, happening at first summit arena those guys down there are killing it with the music they're bringing in here uh, they're setting the stage for this to be a, a destination for music acts to come and you know going to the war memorial is a great place to see an act you know uh, I, I love going to places like that and seeing the indoor arenas but i also like going to a place like stage 80 during the summer where you could be outside you have that atmosphere as well uh so our goal is to be the, like a stage AE in Johnstown where we have our outdoor outdoor pavilion the amphitheater and you know we were able to bring in you know that level of act that would play at stage AE here in Johnstown. Well that, that that'd be huge. I mean that, again that's another big huge undertaking but it would just bring so much to the area once it's all complete. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we 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 ran it over by a lot of people. You know, you know, it, it seems like the way to go. You know, with this, you know, we're always you know we're always looking for people to help us. And it's it's a lot of work. It's a lot of money to do that. And our partners are always always welcome. You know, we have, we get a lot of support from our events, from our sponsors that we have now. You know, with like our beer, wine, and spirits festival, we have a list of sponsors that are willing to help us and donate some money to, you know, get these events kicked off for the community. They see the value in what we're doing. You know, we appreciate people that want to do that because I mean, it's a big, it, it's a big undertaking. Like you said, there's a lot of money involved and we're a nonprofit, you know, our, our board members don't get paid a penny to do this. We're all volunteers. We're all out beating the streets, knocking on doors, asking people for money, asking people to be a donor, asking people to sponsor, you know, just to be a part of this, to make this happen for the community. So, you know, anybody who wants to help in that aspect, we always we always welcome that, you know, because we're going to keep doing it. We'll keep bringing better events and more events to the area. You know, there's already great events here. You know, why not add to that? Keep people saying, hey, you know, there's lots to do in Johnstown. You know, look at look at everything. Yeah. Yeah, I, I encourage people to help out, whether it be time or money, not just for yourself, like the benefit of, you know, if you go and help clear the trail, you know, it benefits you, but just for future generations to come, the more that you can do now helps your future, your family, your friends as well. So it's always good to give back to the community, again, whether it be time or money. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's, that's big for us. We, we want people involved in the community and we want it to be a whole community aspect of Johnstown. Everybody's included. You know, we want everybody there. Yeah. Like I said, is I think it, it's starting to come together. The circle might not be fully enclosed yet, but it, it's getting very close, like with just the community coming together and different organizations and clubs and different parks you know, just starting to work together because they know that's the route to go. And you're one of those vital pieces that I know, like you said, you're reaching out to the different organizations, you know, helping them when they can't, when you can, and they help you the same way. It's just, just the community involvement within one another is really starting to take off. And it's at least from what I've seen, it's, it's really starting to show. Yeah, it's, it's nice to hear that, you know, because, you know, we we wonder what it looks like from the outside. Like I said, we we don't know, like, where we are. You know, our Facebook page has about 5,000 followers right now, you know, which is good considering where we started from. But I, I don't think, I don't think, I think social media hits it in some aspects, but the algorithms on social media doesn't get it to everyone. You know, I mean, it, 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 you can push it as much as you can on there, but, you know, there's other ways to do it. And the best way is word of mouth. You know, hey, I was there. I checked this out. You need to go. You need to go. You know, a lot a lot of the Facebook groups I find are, are, are very valuable for that, especially the ones that deal with like waterfalls or hiking. You know, you post you post pictures out there of the trails and people are like, wow, where is this? You know, and it gets people interested. They come in. They see what we're doing. You know, our trailhead has our advertisements for the different events that we have. So you draw them in on hiking, you get them coming back for an event. You know, they enjoy the atmosphere. You know, that helps our community. You know, you got somebody coming in to hike. They want to stay for the event. Now they're staying at a hotel. They're going to have dinner somewhere else. So now what, what we did, just getting people out to hike has helped how many other business owners in the community? Yeah, you're, I guess, you're sort of scratching each other's backs. Like you're, you're helping one person, they help you. It's just, it, it's, but then again, with, like you said, with social media is you can only get so far. And I think word of mouth really does probably more justice to anything like getting the word out. And I know like, cause me, I'm probably 25, 30 minutes away in new Florence, like my aunt and some stuff, like they heard about the trails now and they, they asked me questions about, how hard it is, you know, where's the good place to go. And like some of my friends are starting to really get into the, the different things, even though I've told them about them before. Now they're really starting to get interested because they see the pictures and they hear the different events. So, I mean, it's starting to take off, but it's one of those things is you don't know that thing that you do will become huge. Like you'll be the next, like whatever they want to call it, TikTok star, you know, the trending thing on Facebook. Like you just don't know that, Next thing that you do will take it off and reach all the goals that you do have. So you just have to keep pushing and plugging away until that time comes where that circle does become fully enclosed. Right. And that's what we're doing day in, day out. You know, we, we, we push, we try to try to keep our trails as pristine as possible. You know, we get lots of compliments on the trails and the work that we do. I mean, I have a great team that works with me here. You know, there's seven of us on the board. We have a number of like, super volunteers that help us all the time with different things when we're doing trail maintenances, the events that we do, you know, people come out and they want to be a part of it. You know, so, I mean, I owe it all to them, I mean, you know, their support and helping us, you know, get, you know, a lot of people take time out of their day, you know, from work to come here and, you know, cut down a tree and you know, do the different things that need to be done. So these trails are in the best shape they can be when people are hiking. You know? So, but, it's just that that's our commitment to the community, you know, from our board is to to make sure that you know, that's the victim. All right. Um, I think that's about all I had for you, uh, unless you want to touch on anything that I might have missed that you have going on. Um, the only other thing that we're working on now, I mean, it's it, it's a it's a future plan where we're hoping to kick it off this year. But we wanted to add a couple bike trails to the uh, to the park as well. We have some ideas of some ones that would just be a bike only. We were going to have uh, a couple like multi-use trails, you know, going through. So uh, that's something that we're looking to do, you know, get some you know people there, kids that ride bikes through there all the time, you know, they love it. So we're kind of thinking, you know, put some formal trails in there that people can ride, you know, um, 
we'll see how that goes. We have a spot on our website. We have a lot of things uh, moving in that direction. But, you know, right now our, our focus is on the Beer, Wine and Spirits Festival. You know, but after that, come June when that's over, you know, it's going to be full throttle on the trails with everything that we're doing with some of these projects. So, you know, hopefully you'll see something different in a few months out there. So, well, I mean, you guys do a ton now, so I don't know how you're going to top whatever you guys have planned in the future. So um, just keep doing what you're doing. And that, as I said, it's starting to get noticed a lot more um, in the outer communities. Um, so I really appreciate the things that you do. I really enjoy coming to the trails, whether it be hiking. Um, you know, I might not partake in like the alcohol portion of like the beer wine, but like just coming to do the uh, listen to the bands. And then doing the five Ks, and then like I said, is I really enjoyed doing the geocaches, and then you know trying to get them all to get that little uh like the geo coin and stuff. Like I found that fun, and it everything that you do pretty much besides like the drinking part is all family friendly. You know anybody of any ability can do it, and that's another reason why I like uh, what you guys are doing. Right. Yeah. And I mean, that, that, that one event, you know, that, that's our, that's our adult event and we have our family friendly event, you know, so we, that's why we did that equal balance of that, but you know, 98% of everything we do there is family friendly outside of the beer, wine and spirits festival. But, you know, that's a, that's a big event for us that helps us raise the most amount of money throughout the year. So that's the reason why we went that route with that fundraiser. Um, you know, now that our nonprofit has been formalized, you know, over a year, we've been established for over a year now here in PA, we're going to be going for a small game of chance license. So we'll be doing different fundraisers on that level where we're maybe selling gun tickets or doing different raffles, things like that. So, you know, a lot of our fundraising can come in that sense. And like I said, we have some different ideas of some other little small events that we might do, you know, you know, day things to get people out into the community and do some things with us. But, you know, we're, we're still working on those. It's all, all in the uh, brainstorming phase right now. So. All right. Well, I'll, I'll let you go on that. And again, I thank you for coming and being on. Um, and I hope this hopes, hopefully gets more people out on the trail and seeing what or hearing what you guys have going on. I appreciate it, Dean. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Have a good night. You too.